It's now been a good month since the 5600 XT has been released and launch day caused a lot of problems, especially for reviewers like us that had to present two different sets of numbers. That was before the vBIOS update and then after AMD rushed out a vBIOS update. And here's the thing, now a month later looking at different websites of all the graphics card manufacturers, a lot of them haven't implemented official support for those 14 gigabits per second memory speeds. However, ASRock, they said to us, look, Brian, we've got a solution that is pretty easy and it may end up netting you more performance. And then they asked me if I wanted to take a look at this sleek carbon fiber, red accented graphics car with a nice Phantom Gaming backplate, triple 80 mil fans, weighs in at 850 grams, and 280 mil long with 112 mil width and also 52 mil depth with three display port outs and a HDMI 2 out. And I said, sure thing, I can take a look at this card for you guys and then even use your software tuning program and see how it stacks up against other popular ones. The most popular, of course, being MSI Afterburner. So let's get into it and see what performance we can get out of this thing and see if it's actually any good. So first things first with this card, you can update the BIOS if you haven't already. And essentially all this is, is just downloading the file and then opening up the uh, update and then it'll do it all for you. And then you restart your computer and you go back in and they've got their OC tweak program, which I've got to say is very simple in that it's a good thing for some people. And of course it won't compare in other ways to something like Afterburner, where if you're a benchmarker, you're going to be able to utilize River Tuner, for example, and get so much more out of that program. But what I do like about this uh, OC tweak in particular is it's just easy to select through the three different modes out of the box. So they've even got the silent mode, which should be called undervolt mode because it does save a little bit of power. And you can see that with the max power limit, it drops it down by about 10%. Though clicking through the silent mode and also default mode, you may notice that the memory target clock is still at 1500 megahertz, AKA 12 gigabits per second. Now this was the day one speeds that we saw when I reviewed the ASUS TOF 5600 XT, for example. And even when I applied the vBIOS update on that model, we were still left with the same memory speeds. And a lot of manufacturers out there for these cards aren't guaranteeing the 1700 megahertz 14 gigabits per second memory speeds, simply because they haven't validated them at the factory, which means that even though you left click overclock mode here in this software, it will raise the memory target clock to 1750 megahertz, but ASRock can't guarantee those speeds because they haven't validated them at the factory. So they've only tested and they've only had time to test for these 1500 megahertz speeds, even though the overclock here, which I'm actually running in 29 degree ambient heat, is working absolutely fine. And so if you get one of these cards from ASRock, whether it's their Challenger or their two fan or what we've got here, the three fan Phantom Gaming X models, this software is super easy to set up in that you can just go to preferences, left click both these little boxes here and then left click OC mode and it'll essentially boot your GPU up now with these set clock speeds in mind. And so you'll get a lot more performance even over that of the 14 gigabits per second V BIOS updates that AMD dropped. And we can see that here where we've got 1750 megahertz on this GPU because ASRock with their Phantom Gaming X models, I was told, decided to bin the memory on the GDDR6 when they made these particular models in mind. The one really cool thing I found about this software was the memory usage. We can see here the GPU memory utilization is actually reporting lower than that of Afterburner. So I believe this software is reporting actual GPU memory usage as opposed to Afterburner, which uh, pretty much reports on the maximum that the buffer will use for that particular point in time. So it's different ways of reporting, but I feel like this is more accurate. So that's one cool advantage to using this software. Another thing you'll notice with the Phantom Gaming X is there's no VRM temperature probe. However, in my testing, I found the VRM temperatures to come right around the GPU temps, especially with models where the VRM heatsink is attached to the GPU heatsink, which in this case, that's exactly what's going on. And so we can see here out of the box, I'm recording this while I'm benchmarking about 40 centimeters away from the Phantom Gaming X and the temperatures in a 29C ambient environment 
are really impressive, especially for an OC mode, where the most we saw was 63 degrees Celsius, and then the hotspot temp, which is essentially your memory temperatures that got to 74 degrees. So temperatures and noise on this card, it doesn't matter what mode you select, you're going to get some really good results. Though one more thing you may notice about this chart is I've added in the custom overclock, which is what's called in the software user mode. So you can set in and apply your own overclocks and you can do this really quickly in this software. And the good thing is I've got here 1820 megahertz on both the memory target clock and the GPU target clock. So what we're gonna do is now get these numbers and see how they perform against some of the other numbers I've got here with other 5600 XTs and then report back on the Phantom Gaming X. We have now finished the benchmarks with this little 5600 XT here. And you're probably thinking, damn, that looks a lot smaller than it did in the B-roll. And that's because the cooler is actually overhanging the back here where I think it's a really good design when we looked at those temperatures because the air can now blow straight through the card, at least on the last fan, and that's not restricting airflow, which I was really impressed with this model in terms of its temps and noises and the fact that that OC mode and the custom overclock mode did slightly better than both the Gigabyte card I had through here with its official 14 gigabits per second BIOS update and the ASUS TUF both uh, with its VBIOS update and overclocked. And the Micron GDDR6 memory in this case did go all the way up to 1820 megahertz. Though compared to the 14 gigabits per second VBIOS update models out there, you are getting a little bit more by going with the OC tuning software from ASRock and then locking in that overclocked mode. The custom overclocked mode, it really wasn't worth it. As we saw in those benchmarks, one extra FPS, they've really done a good job of tuning their card to perfection out of the box, where I was surprised to see that the default AMD mode was losing to the silent mode, which was saving you a little bit of power. So I do like in this case how ASRock have spent the extra time going through those profiles and then delivering them. And they've also got their polychrome sync RGB software, but in this case, it really only changes the logo, but you can also turn it off if you are not a fan of RGB. Though the good thing is it syncs with their ASRock motherboards. For instance, we're using a Tai Chi on the test bench here. So it's able to sync up and get the same colors on that logo as it can on the motherboard. So now it's time to give you guys a conclusion on the Phantom Gaming X. And I gotta say, this is the most impressive 5600 XT that's come through here. Not just in the case of the numbers it produced here today, but also the fact that I didn't even need to change the fan profiles because they worked on all the modes that I set here today and they gave really good temps and really low noise. So whatever ASRock's doing with this model, I'd like to see them keep up in future models of their graphics cards because I think they've just nailed it with this card. Now, there is gonna be a little bit of a premium, of course, for this model versus, say, a reference model. Though that's usually the way it goes for a bit of extra quality on your GPU. And that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments what you think about the 5600 XT. I do think that ASRock in particular have done a great job of mitigating what AMD did on day one with these cards and the fact that they're still giving you an option to easily get performance out of it without sort of saying, hey, we haven't validated this, but we're just gonna throw it out there forcefully. And I know there's going to be some people out there that are gonna say, well, company X has released these VBIOS updates and backdated them even to the cards that they haven't validated. And I'm looking at ASRock and like even like Zeus and other companies, especially the ones that come from Taiwan. And if you guys have like been lived in Japan or Taiwan and stuff, then you'll know how a lot of the Asian culture does things. And that is they just simply won't guarantee something that they haven't validated. It goes against their principles in their culture. And so I guess that's why you're not seeing the official 14 gigabits per second updates being rolled out uh, forcefully on a lot of the cards out there. Though do let us know your thoughts and opinions on this one. And speaking of those thoughts and opinions, we got that question of the day, which comes from Scotty MSU. And they ask, why can't we talk about a certain virus? Is this speak police we have to worry about now? And basically, yeah, that's how it is in 2020. You guys know the drill. Um, I'm just ultimately here to give you guys tech videos and I wanna stay away from all that mainstream stuff 
where I'm just giving you guys the vids, the enthusiast tech vids, and I wanna make sure my channel goes through that without getting scuffed in the process. So that's pretty much the only way I know how to do it. And that's the way it's gotta be, I guess. So hope that explains that. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And of course, if you're enjoying the content and you've stayed this far, then be sure to hit that sub button on the way out. Ring that bell to get those videos as soon as they drop. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.